wait long enough, I actually list everything that I need to get done during the you know week. A lot time slots for each of those things and prioritize and on a daily basis I extract from that long list for the week what I need to get done and um, well maybe I haven't really drilled down to all those measures but I do know that when I'm able to do that I can actually look back and specifically you know look uh, select things that I achieved so uh, then that's how it applies to me, or how I've tried Thank to you. apply it to my life. Anybody else? Um, for me, I every day I wake up with a list of things I need to do, but I ask myself, what is that one thing I will do today that at the end of today I will smile, I'll be happy, I'll feel accomplished. You know, and I make that my priority. Um, so I make sure that I accomplish that. And so at the end of the day, I'm happy. That's good. That's good. Now, does anybody see the relevance, why this is important for us to begin to learn now? Does anybody see the point I'm trying to make with this? I I'll tell you a story. In Jesus' embassy, I started teaching about savings as a policy in church. And um, it cost a bit of a stare at the beginning of that. That's why my accountant said it affected the income of the church. Uh, but I said she should give it some time. That in a few months' time, she will see that the reverse will start happening. And it did. And I remember there was this lady, this very um, young lady. She's now in Pastor Austin's church. Her mother is one of the biggest merchants at, uh, at Okunpa Market. And she said, Pastor, what you just taught, my mother does it, and my mother is not educated. She says, in my mother's office, where she sells things, she has four buckets. Whenever they sell goods in her shop, she will take a little percentage and put it in a bucket, in another bucket, and then different percentages. Different. Then she will now tell the people who work for her, oh, Njelele. You know what I mean? Then she will now say, oh, you know, this is money we're going to use to buy new stock. She wasn't educated, but she knew how to do the portions. What you are listening to, as articulated as it is, are principles that people who have succeeded, whether they're educated or not, have done. I don't know if you get my point. So some of us think this is one foreign thing you are trying to bring to our culture. It's not. It's what works. I don't know if I'm making any sense. You know, Jesus was talking to Martha and Mary, and, and, and Martha was Martha was actually doing what we do, which is go to church, which is serve, become an usher, help the pastor, run around. And, and Mary sat down at Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, She has chosen what? The more important thing. Can you move the slide forward? This is just the pictures of what we watched. I put it on a slide so that it will be easy to follow. Can we, can we start moving the slide, please? Thank you. All right? A, a good idea without <laughs> execution is worthless. I love that. Because all of, you know, sometimes people are saying, I have this idea. Let, let me say some. Somebody, people, people in church, they do it regularly. I have this idea. Share it now. Ah, no, if I share it, people will copy me. And they will take my idea. So, your idea, as a matter of fact, you can Google any idea you want. How to grow a church in five years? How to make a bomb? How to... There's nothing you can't find on Google. Ideas are two for penny. It's execution that is the difference between ideas. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Most people think that Facebook was the first social media platform. No. Google wasn't the first uh, search engine. Yahoo was before Google. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Um, all these companies that have made it successfully, you'll be surprised that there were hundreds of companies before them. The difference between their success and the success of Google, Apple, and all these companies is their execution. So you and I sitting down here thinking that, oh, my idea is what's going to make 
me succeed is the biggest way you fool yourself all right move move on move on i gotta move on and he, he was asked you're moving too fast now chief of staff you've you've skipped almost to the end I really need to be in control of this thing. Maybe I praise them too quickly. Praise the Lord. All right, maybe we'll get there eventually. Yeah. All right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, Miss Fatter has, has spoken about this. You know, you are even talking about being busy for a week. Some people have been busy for 40 years and have not accomplished anything. I'm telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. If you spend your whole life buying liabilities, paying rent, buying cars, buying clothes, buying equipment, and not investing your money in assets, you will spend 40 years and have nothing to show for it. Don't forget that your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. I promise you, if I give you a piece of paper this morning and I ask us in this room to calculate which one of us has assets, I promise you 98% of us will fail. There will be no asset in our asset column. In other words, you would have something of value, but what you are owing will be more than what you, do, what you, what you think you have of value. So at the end of the day, when you drop dead, what are your children going to inherit? Your liabilities, not your assets. So you can actually spend life not accomplishing anything. Go on, move on, move on, move on to the next slide. You see, the world wind makes everything very, very urgent. Things are always on fire. You know, ah, uh, I be, we must go for this wedding. You know, that's the one that always kind of, always puts me off. You are getting married. Uh-huh. Your child is being named. Uh -huh. Did you come from my own? Why must I make yours a big priority? I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Where it will affect the plans that have... Please don't misunderstand me. My job as a pastor is to show up. I'll do my job. But that's because it's my job. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. My family knows I have a problem traveling for a wedding. To go to Lagos because somebody's getting married. You spend money going, spend money coming back. You buy clothes, you buy shoes, you buy a shabby, you stay in a hotel, you spend stupid money, and then the priorities of your life, you don't do anything about. You spend all your energy trying to attend the program. I'm not saying don't, but I'm saying get your priorities right. The house is, on, I mean, you're, you're, you've been living in rented apartment for, calculate your rent for 20 years. When we were in Jesus' embassy, we were in embassy, I can't remember how many years, 10 years, I can't remember how many years, 10, or 11, or 12 years, we were paying 1.2 or 1.5 million uh, a, a year or something. In 10 years, we had spent 15 million. When we ran our balance sheet, the only thing we had as assets were plastic chairs because they had, they, they had depreciated the cost of our equipment. So we, were, we had spent 15 million naira on rent, not to talk of generator, diesel and all that. And when they did our balance sheet, all we had was some old equipment and chairs. So I said to myself, this can continue. This can continue. We will just be fools spending money on rent. Let's buy a property that we can rent out. And in one year, that property generated 12 million naira. I didn't say that it generated 12 million naira in income for the church. Go to the next slide. Go on. It begins to talk about four, four things, and you all know what the four are, so I don't want to waste too much time on them. Go to the next slide. I, I, I like this. Go, go forward a little bit. I'll tell you when to stop. Go forward. I want, I want the notes to come up on the side so that I don't have to. Think. Just go to the next slide. Yeah. Now, now, most of you are not familiar with uh, air traffic controllers. F air traffic controllers are people at the airport who are responsible for which aircraft lands and when and on which runway. It 
it's a complicated process these guys are highly brilliant they're well trained you know what i mean the ability to know how many aircrafts are coming when they're going to land how long it will take them to land when one is taking them so that they don't it's a complex process they have thank god today they have computers and software that's helping them but there was a time when they didn't have all that but what he's trying to show you here is that no matter what is happening at an airport the most important aircraft to the air traffic controller is the one about to land not the ones that are still floating in the air because if he makes a mistake with the one about to land not only will he kill everybody on the aircraft everybody in the air now will be in trouble because they will have nowhere to land am i making sense so he gets his priority right it's like he has zero focus it's like listen i'm going to land this plane and that's what this wildly important goes about what is the one thing in your life what is the most important thing in your life that you know you need to accomplish that will make everything else in your life significant for some of us now please don't make it about money because that's where we make our mistake let me give you an example yesterday my wife went for a burial of her cousin in lagos a naval officer was coming out of uh, his uh, office or something and a woman's miss drove, drove badly and hit him and killed him so i asked her yesterday i said is his wife educated y yes but she doesn't have you know how is she going to look after the children? thank god for the navy they're taking care of the children and, and the wife for a while but i said we have to start preparing our wives for times like this most of you don't realize that the more money you invest in your wife's education and opportunities the more you have safeguarded your children if you die i don't know if you get the point i'm making if that is a priority in your hand and say listen sweetheart i don't mind suffering for the next three years go and get a master's or go and get a phd i don't know if you get the point i'm making that's a wildly important goal to you am i making sense you deciding you're going to have something so that when something goes wrong you have I don't, I, don't, I don't want to make it about cars and houses because those things are too they're too shallow are you here but we don't think like that we don't think like that i want to have an asset that is generated you are not making money you're not wealthy until you're making money when you are asleep you're not wealthy until money enters into your account without you working what is the one thing I can do that no matter what, if I'm sick, if I'm, if I'm dying, if I die, money comes. Yesterday, a young man was supposed to help me publish my, my, my books on an app separately. So he said, should I tie it to the bridge network? I said, no. He said, why? I said, because when I die, I don't want my children arguing with the bridge network over who owns the book. It's my book. I don't know if you got the point I'm making. I, I believe the book is going to sell long after I'm dead. So I'm saying, I don't want my children arguing over who owns I don't want any church arguing over that they are my books they are my intellectual property I don't know if you get the point I'm making I want the generations coming after separate them now am I making sense now how many of you have thought about it what can I do in my life that will make me financially independent I didn't say rich I didn't say wealthy I said financially independent what's that wildly important thing you'll be surprised that it could be as it could be as simple as getting a master's it could be as simple as getting an mba it could be as simple as learning a particular skill it could be as business as buying shares it could be as simple as investing i don't know if you get the point i'm making but when you haven't thought about it when you haven't planned it your life just well wind takes over your whole life and for 40 years you're chasing your, your own you're, you're chasing what do they say you're chasing your own tail which you will never catch go to the next slide if everything remained what one achievement could make everything else i decided two things in this church this year number one we need to put in systems if i had systems i don't need to think and teach everybody again it's there when you leave somebody else comes and takes over what am i doing i'm retiring myself long before it's time for me to be retired and eliminating problems long before they happen i'm answering questions i have not been asked go on i like what he said from x to y by when you need to have a date 
I'm not saying you shouldn't build your house but the reason why you want to build your house must be obvious to you sometimes it's not a house you need to build it's an investment you need to make in real estate and they're two different things if you live in your own house and it's not generating any money for you and by the way if you think living in your, house, your own house won't cost you money you are the biggest fool on the face of the earth living in your own house it's almost as expensive as living in because you have to put electricity you have to fix things you have to maintain you have to have a security guard you have to bring in plumbers am i making sense you still it will still cost you something so a house in itself is not an asset per se however if you build a block of flats that you rent out or a shop that you rent out that's an asset am i making sense sometimes that's where to start from am i making any sense to somebody and by the way pastor all those wonderful children running around you they're going to pack their load and leave so stop building a six bedroom apartment you don't need it i don't know if i'm making any sense build four flats give them two to live in when they leave rent it out am i making any sense let's go to the next slide we don't have much time left this is the one that go on just let it fill up let it fill up so that I won't have to wear. Yeah. Now this is one that we, we don't we don't we don't think about. He, he's trying to tell you here that if you are trying to build a house, if you are trying to achieve something, increase your sales, or get a master's degree, it's not going to happen overnight. However, you can get easily discouraged when you don't see results. And he gave the example of somebody climbing a scale. I do it every time. In my, in, my, in my house, I have this wee little contraption in my house that has a scale and an exercise concept. I get on it every morning. I do my exercises every morning. And I climb on the scale. Today, to tell me I am X number, and I'll be happy to tell me I have dropped two pounds. By the time I come on it next week again, it tells me I have then two more power and i'm always like what kind of wahala is this you get the point i'm making but what he's saying is that those measurements don't change overnight but my consistently doing it now this is what happened the opposite happened to me i stopped doing it for about two weeks or whenever i travel abroad and i don't have an opportunity to do it on a regular basis i come back and find that i put on 10. but by doing it consistently it's always minus plus minus plus minus so i'm always at a particular weight. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. So what he's saying is that when you want to increase your revenue, stop looking at your revenue. Look at the things that increase your revenue. In other words, write more letters, make more phone calls, advertise more, talk about your products instead of putting the food you're eating on Facebook. Talk about, I don't know if I'm making any sense. Talk about what you're doing. Educate people about the products and services that you're offering. The more you do those things, the more it affects the thing you're looking for it's like you want a girl to marry you you walk up to her and say would you marry me she'll say no am i right she doesn't know you am i i'm, I'm talking to the young people now okay she'll say no i don't want to marry you you've lost abby but that's not what you do you first take her out for dinner you become her friend, you buy her little gifts, you care for the little things. What are you doing? You are doing little, little things before you ask the big question, which is, will you marry me? I don't know if you get the point I'm making. That's what it's all about. It's about you learning to build up to where you are going. Are you here? So when it comes to weight, he's saying, exercise, control what you eat. You will see the results. Stop focusing on what the scale says. Focus on the activities that are putting, helping you to put on weight. Are you here? Let's go to the next one. This is the one. Fill it up. Just fill it up. You will know when to stop. Yeah. Now, we shared this last week. How do you know that you are accomplishing anything? If you don't measure things and that's a big problem we have in this country nobody takes data churches don't take attendance they don't write it down they don't take income they don't compare last year income with this year's income they don't i don't know if how would you know what is happening without data and you know the funny thing is that one of the things most people don't know is that all the social media platforms you have in this world instagram uh facebook 
Twitter and all that. If you go behind your own platform, you will see nothing but data. These four disciplines of execution, I wrote a serial, my own particular notes on it called my notes on four disciplines of execution. I put it up. At that time, the most trendy message I ever put up on SlideShare was a message called Change or Die, which I preached many years ago. People liked it. 4,000, 5,000, or 6,000 people downloaded it. I'm sorry, watched it. People downloaded it. And I was excited about it. One day, I started to just look at all my work. And I found out that my notes, for this of resolution, has 18,000 people who had seen it. And I was blown away. So it now tells me the kind of messages people respond to. Not the kind of message I think they will respond to. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus knew who he was. But listen to what Jesus said. He says, who do men say I am? If you don't understand how people respond to things, you wouldn't know how to package those things for them. I don't know if I'm making any sense. You need a scoreboard. Like he was saying, if we are all playing outside and there's a basketball, and we're all playing basketball or football outside, and we don't take any score, everybody will play in a very laid-back attitude. They will kick the ball. If the ball comes to them, they will kick. But the minute you say, we're going to start taking scores, what happens? What happens? Everybody now gingers up. Why? Because you have a score. Now, when do you sit down? When did you give yourself a scoreboard for your own life? How many of you said, at 30, I want to do this? At 40, I want to do this? At 50, I want to do this? I planned to retire when I was 50. Didn't succeed. But at least I had a goal. What do I mean by retire? I am not going to work for money again. That's what I believe retirement is. Not that I won't make money, but I won't work for it. If you don't have such scoreboards, in your life you won't be in a hurry try to do something without setting a deadline then try to do something when you set a deadline and see the difference if you have to plan your wedding in two weeks what you will accomplish in those two weeks you won't accomplish it if you said i'm going to plan my wedding for next year we say when say sometime next year what is going to happen scoreboards have a way listen to me Scoreboards sometimes are self-determined. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Not God-determined. What I mean? What do I mean by that? I can decide that I want to finish this thing in a month or in a year. That's my decision. God is not offended either way. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. But not putting a scoreboard. is what makes our life drift. Drift. The last one. accountability that one keeps stripping off you know what it's accountability we don't like it in Nigeria president doesn't want to be accountable yet most of you don't understand the democracy we borrowed from America it's a simple system of accountability the executive is under the oversight you know what I mean of the judiciary and the what they call it? Legislation. The executive also oversees what the judiciary and that's why you call them executive orders. Then the justice system makes sure that nobody does any excesses. Then the Congress and all that are designed to also stop the justice system from doing something wrong. Why? God is the only judge and lawgiver. He's the only one who is God, who is perfect, who can both hear a case and decide for it. Human beings are flawed. Am I making sense? And so the only way for human beings not to get excessive power is to split it. Am I making sense? And accountability is what brings the balance. Most of us don't like it. How many of you, how many men here will say they are accountable to their wives and their children? You are the head of the house. Doesn't make, mean that you are not accountable. Daddy, you said we are going to do this next year. Why haven't you done it? How 
we don't like it. I, I, I can't say. You see, accountability is actually the key to execution. It helps you to execute because you know that if you didn't execute, you would have to tell why you didn't execute. We don't like it. Do you know that Sunday services and meetings are actually designed to stop you from drifting away? Some of you, you are sitting here, let me tell you something. If you are going to the gym and there's nobody in the gym who's accountable to, you can miss the gym for four weeks, lose all the weight, the, lose all, gain back all the weight you lost, lose control of your life simply because you didn't follow your discipline. Same thing in church. But I found that most businesses and families don't sit down and hold themselves. Your children, by design, are accountable to you. You say, how? They bring report cards. Don't they? At the end of the year, at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, they bring report. That's accountability. Where is your own? Can I make it worse for you? Jesus and the Holy Spirit are accountable to God. Have you not read it in your Bible? Guess what? God himself holds himself accountable to the Trinity. In other words, he takes a decision, but he takes it to the Trinity to approve it. Accountability meetings are not a waste of time. They must be regular. They keep you from drifting too far. You know one thing we don't do about it? I was telling somebody the other day, I said, I, said, I said, one of the biggest challenges I face as a Christian is that, and I don't mean any disrespect. Now, please, I want to put this thing in context. I'm not being rude or anything. But I'm saying if I make an altar call and 100 of you come out and I lay hands on all of you and 10 of you get healed, my tendency is to rejoice at the 10 that got healed and ignore the 90 that didn't get healed and tell you that I'm a man of God. Am I right? But the truth about it is I should ask myself why did only 10 get healed? What can I do to improve my percentages? I don't know if you get the point I'm making. That's what accountability does. But we hide the 90 Well, when I was in America the other day, a man came, <laughs> and I just did like this, and everything happened. Well, what about all of us that are sitting here? We're here. Do it now. He can't do it. But if he sits down and says, what happened? Let me investigate it. How can I reproduce this? I don't know if you get the point I'm making. How can I get better results? How can I do this better? How can I be more successful? I don't know if you get the point I'm making. disciplines are not about execution the four disciplines are about executing in the midst of whirlwinds I'll put it another way the four disciplines are about learning to succeed in a country where things don't work because everybody gives me that excuse why isn't this working I just also didn't show up. No, no, no. It's your ability to achieve what you are supposed to achieve in spite of. I, you know that you know, it, it, to me it's one of the most it, it's to me it's one of the biggest weaknesses we have in this country. Complain about the country. You know, this is one country where you can build a house and nobody will harass you. Nobody checks your standards. Nobody checks your doors. We think that this country is loose. Go to America. Try to build a building. Or England. Don't get the right permits. Don't follow the measurements. Sometimes you have, you have your money. You have designed your house. You followed all the rules. They can keep you waiting for a year. You see, every country has its limitations. It is your ability.
ability to walk in within those limitations and succeed that's what true success is how long i remember i remember many years ago when the recession started everybody started complaining about the recession and i remember one day i said to somebody i said oh boy you were broke before the recession it's not the recession that made you broke you've always been broke so please stop blaming the recession. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Everybody's looking for an excuse, something to hide behind. This country is tough and it's bad, but there are people in this country right now who are succeeding because they know how to play the game. I have four generators at the back of this auditorium right now. Four. Now all of you were here last week or two Sundays ago where three broke down. Is that, is that head off? In one service, three broke down. That's how you walk in this country. You have four generators. Or now you increase it to five. But you still get the job done. Unfortunately for you, the job is your life. And if you continue to blame your wife, your husband, the circumstances, the country, you know, and the people complain a lot. I was interviewed, one day I was invited on October 1st to talk on radio. They brought this professor who was very articulate, knew all his statistics, and the guy kept advising the government for 30 minutes. For every 15 minutes, the person who was doing the interview would talk to me, don't you have anything to say? I finally said to him, I said, if you have a father that for 55 years has been failing you, what advice are you going to give him now at 55 that he would do? I said, I don't have time to talk about what... I want to start looking for solutions that I can do myself. That I don't care whether there's a good government in office or not. Still waiting for government to come and help you. Still waiting for government to give you pension. Did you hear what's happening in Kaduna? 22,000 teachers are uneducated. Now, multiply that by the number of students they had. We'll tell you how many uneducated people we have in schools today. And we're all sitting down, it doesn't bother us. But there is a solution. Our governments, ministers, senators, Nepal officials. You know, Nepal will go, a poll, a, a, a one cable will fall off the pole, like if you go to Nepal office. Your poll comes to Jabo, a job Ashe, ah, Monday Lamashe. He's not thinking that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You are wasting resources. He's not thinking. It doesn't even occur to him. I would rather he say, Timba share for me 5,000 naira. I will compare it to what I'm losing. I will give you the 5,000. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. But he doesn't see it that way. One day, I have to money I money generator to my toilet, you say, to my waste. Meanwhile, their own income from which where they make their money, they too won't get. But he's happy to postpone it. Execution is our biggest problem in this country. And if those of us who have light, if our eyes be blind, how dark do you think the rest of the country is? God bless you. Four disciplines of execution. One set goals. But what are we going to do with what we've heard this morning? You know, the striking point for me is that it is not because things are rosy, that is why you get what you need to get done, done. But in spite of the difficulties, you still get what you are supposed to get done. Done. You know, it's also something, um, maybe because of the last slide that shows that have weekly accountability meetings. But I think that it's something that we can do on a daily basis. You wake up in the morning, you set a goal for that day. Or possibly the previous night, you set a goal for the day. You look at the 
lead measures, the things that you will do to accomplish that goal. You set up a scoreboard. That's what you intend to accomplish. And now, are you getting towards that accomplishment for that day? And at the end of the day, in the evening, it's time to relax, to take a rest. You take a check over that particular day to see whether you have accomplished what you set out to accomplish. It's as simple as that. But you also know something that, because I also want us to tie it into the seven habits that we've been studying from the beginning of the year. Am I being proactive? That today in this particular situation, in this particular circumstance, am I proactive? Did I begin with the end in mind? Did I think win-win? And the several other habits that we're taught. Because all of these things are not just for us to know, but for us to act on. And for all these things to become our daily lives. Because it is the doer that gets blessed. Can we bow down our hearts tonight or this morning? I want us to just talk to God. Some of us are still waiting. Some of us are still complaining. Complaining about every circumstance. You know, yesterday I was having a chat with Pastor, trying to just share, we're having a discussion. And I was relating an experience I had on my trip to Abuja with one of the persons I went with and the guy was saying we, we met this younger guy who got a loan of about 20 million and we're talking and the, the person I went with was like oh he must have a very good father the father must have done a good foundation laid a good foundation for him in business and the rest I said you can't say until we meet him and ask him and on meeting the guy the guy said something that blew my mind he says that while running his business, a customer just walked into, one of his customers walked into his workshop and asked him and said, don't you want a loan to expand your business? Uh, and he said, yes, I want the loan, but I don't have collateral. And he says, the customer just looked at him and says, what collateral are you looking for? He says, a C of O. And the customer says, C of O. Is, it, is that all that you need? He says, I have C of, four C of O's in this city. And he gave him one for that loan we've read it over and over again in this house that preparation meets opportunity what preparation are you making or you are waiting for that opportunity to come before you start making the preparation at that point it is late can you just I just want us to start with that first one. Just set a goal. Just set a goal and place a timeline. It's still not too late. We still have about five weeks for, this, for the end of this year. Just one goal. Just one goal of something that you want to accomplish. Something meaningful. Something impactful that you want to accomplish. If you have a pen and a paper this morning, you will want to write it down. You can go ahead and just write it down in a place that you can always be reminded of it. Because it is time for action. It is not time again for us to say, oh, it was a brilliant sermon that we heard in church today. No. It is time for us to begin to act upon it so that we can see the fruit thereof. And once we've done that, I want us to just commit it into God's hands and say, Lord, help me. And can I tie it to something that um, Pastor Gandhi said during the anniversary? 
and I will refresh it. It says that we should fo- change our f- focus from the devil and focus on God. But I want to change it this way and says, remove your focus on the difficulties and focus on what is possible. Because I can bet you, if you can accomplish that goal, it takes care of all the negativity that you might be thinking about. Lord, help us this morning. This one goal that we have set this morning. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will bring to us the resources that we need. You will bring to us the skills that we need. You will bring to us des- destiny helpers. People, men, women that will perfect our faith, that which is lacking in our faith men that we will be accountable to men that will hold us accountable men that will encourage us and help us men that will push us forward that will push us into accomplish this goal father we ask that you will send across our pathway and father we ask lord that you will help us that you will grant us strength in our inner man by your spirit and for those of us that are still thinking what goal can I set? Father, I pray this morning that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Lord, we thank you this morning. And Father, we pray for our pastor and our set man. Lord, that you will continually strengthen him. We pray, O oh God, for grace and abundant grace upon him. We pray, O oh God, for a freshness of your unction upon him. We pray, oh God, even a refreshing of the vision that you have placed and you have put in his heart. And Lord, we also pray for a speedy performance of all that you have said concerning him and concerning this house. Lord, we do give you praise and glory this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Shall we package our tithes and our offering this morning? We can't know several things going on on social media about the issue of tithing and all the rest. But the fact remains that it is more honorable to give than to receive. How many of us know that even investment is given for you to receive a return? Let's package our tithes. Let's package our offering this morning. If you also want to redeem your pledge towards the anniversary, you can also do that if you want to write a check you can do that to the bridge network to the church's account you want to do a transfer the account numbers are on the screen you want to use the POS you can just ask the ushers to assist you with that and the ushers will soon be going around for you to drop your offerings in the offering basket father we thank you again this morning we thank you as we honor you with our seed father we pray oh God for your word says that we will receive and return good measure press down shaking together and running over will you return back to us father even as we honor you this morning with our tight father we pray oh god that the window of heaven will be open the window of revelation the window of enlightenment the window of what to do at this time is opened unto us in the name of jesus thank you god in jesus name we pray amen just quickly this morning, I want to welcome, if you are worshipping with us for the first time, I want to welcome and acknowledge you. Do we have anybody worshipping with us for the first time? Can you please just do us an honor to rise on your feet if you are worshipping with us for the first time? Do we have anyone? All right. So just to take the announcement for this week, just to remind us again, on Wednesday is our midweek service. We'll be together to pray, to study the word. And um, this month... We've been looking at the theme, praying like Paul. These are actually scriptural prayers that we're looking at to pray. Prayers that God, anytime, any day, anywhere will always answer. So please let's make it a date from 5 p.m. in the evening as we come together to lift up our bodies to pray concerning the bodies that God has placed in our hearts, speaking in tongues and 
praying in the Holy Ghost. So please let's be here. Also for our children, prayer walks. Also on Wednesday, please let us be here. Um, we're having our workers forum this Saturday, 4 p.m. in the evening. I think we'll, I'll be doing, a pastor as well will also be doing the announcement much later during the network service because we'll be having um, elections for the different ministry units today immediately after the service. So we'll go for a coffee break this morning and we'll be back here for the network service by 9.30 a.m. God bless you and have a lovely Sunday.